Homology of Modular Curves. <laughs> I changed the title. Because the other title I changed to was very similar to the title of my third talk. Um, so, uh, let's uh, start with the prime. So in this talk, the prime will be at least 5. Just, which probably isn't necessary, but is necessary for some of the theorems I'm using. Um, so, uh, right, so I'm going to take, uh, instead of the, so now I want to think of the open modular curve as a, as a scheme. Um, so, so y1 of p, which we discussed before, uh, now I want to think of it as a scheme over z1 over p. And, um, and so it's the moduli space. Now I'm, I'm not going to take the, actually I have to switch back and forth between the two models in a way. I don't have to, I could just take the usual one, but um, for purposes of Galois actions, let me take uh, y1 of p to be the moduli space of elliptic curves over uh, z1 over p and, um, and uh, injections uh, from mu p to uh, the P torsion. Okay. So, um, so this sits inside a, a curve, the x1 over p, for generalized elliptic curves. Um, and uh, and so now, if we look at the tau cohomology over q bar, so that's just the usual uh, cohomology over c, if you like, except it has a it has a Galois action. So, so this is actually isomorphic to the homology group, we'll talk about that later, that I was discussing in the last talk. So, um, right, so this thing uh, injects, actually I'm going to discuss it very soon, into the Itao cohomology group of the open modular curve. And um, and so by uh, Poincaré duality, we can think of this as being also H1. But now, um, so the Galois acts on this. Absolute Galois group of Q. So, and on this, compatibly. And um, so this is the, if you like, the Pontryagin dual of H1, but that doesn't quite get the Galois action right. It's given by a cup product. And so I need a minus one twist here. Okay, so so. But, but if you take a um, um, dual of the compact stuff, then uh, it's oh QP mod ZP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking um, HOM to ZP. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. I should have no. I should have taken QP mod ZP. Let's do QP mod ZP. That's better. Uh, no, no. ZP. ZP. Not Pontryagin. Let's do that. Okay, so this is a HOM to, HOM to ZP. Okay, so, um, right, so there's no, no torsion there, so. Okay, so, we have the same, no, so I need compactly supported here. Um, so I'm not so worried about these groups, I'm not gonna use them. This is just the intermediate stage. So here we have this, and then, um, and then we can uh, compare this to the homology that we were talking about before. Now this won't be uh, of Gawa, so the, the homology we had last time was H1, X1, P, uh, ZP. Now, now uh, there's no Gawa action here, so, um, well we could have compared this Right, but well, it's dual. There's no Galois, this is by integration if you like. There's no Galois action here, but um, there is an action of complex conjugation. So if I want to, so I have complex conjugation here. So if I want to get that right, or I could take H1 a tau or something, but uh, I should put a minus one twist. Okay, and then this will inject into H lower one, um, X1, P, uh, C1, P, ZP. So these are, so these are, this is uh, over C. Okay, and these are the cusps. 
Okay, so this is just how we're going to, I'm going to talk in this talk about these cohomology groups and, and this cohomology group is sort of non-canonically, if you like, isomorphic to this homology group, but you can make it canonical uh, if you think of Q bar sitting inside C. Okay, so, um, right, so that's the, that's the comparison. So in the last talk I talked about um, a map from, from something intermediate between these two, and I restricted it to this eventually, uh, to um, H2 of the Galois group of the maximal and ramified outside P extension of Q mu P with coefficients in um, ZP2. Okay, so now I have a map from, from this group to the same thing, modulo Eisenstein ideal. So there's also HECA actions, I should say that. So there's also HECA actions on, on all these things. So, um, so if I have a TL acting here, then here compatibly is acting an adjoint uh, or dual HECA operator, TL star. And uh, same with UP and the diamond operators. So there's starred versions, but um, right, so some sort of adjoint action. And, um, and these actions commute of the Gawa and the Heka actions commute. Okay, so, um, so now I want to take, and this again is not so necessary because I'm going to be working mod Eisenstein ideals, but let's just take um, E star, so to be um, Hita's idempotent for the, for the dual of the Heka operator UP, so, so this is the limit as write the limit in the right way, limit as n goes to infinity of uh, up um, to the star to the n factorial. So this is he does idempotent. And I can apply that, that limit exists inside the Heck algebra, it's an idempotent, and I can apply it to any of these, well these two groups. Um, I'm being a little careless with which Hecke algebras and whatever, but you can think of these uh, as acting abstractly. Um, okay, so, so, uh, so if I take E star, for instance, X H1, the tau X1 P over um, Q bar uh, with ZP coefficients, um, then uh, this is what's called the ordinary part. So I'll write this as the ordinary part. So what is the ordinary part? It's sort of the, it's the sort of the largest, um, well, sum end on which um, up minus one acts invertibly. Up star minus one acts invertibly, uh, or up star, sorry, acts invertibly on that thing. Okay. So, um, okay, so now uh, I want to define H to be the inverse limit of the H1, the tau X1. So now I'm, I'm going to, oh yeah, I'm going to not stick with level P, but now let me vary the level. You can do all this with any level, P to the N. And so, uh, or I'll take p to the r, I think. Um, so x1 p to the r, uh, zp, ordinary part. Okay, so that's the object I want to study. Okay, so this has an action of a Hecke algebra. The Hecke algebra, maybe uh, h star, is the, or I'm just going to call it h. It's the inverse limit of the, um, if you like uh, the ordinary parts, so E star on, um, on the, the Hecke, cuspidal Hecke algebra, so maybe I'll just write a T, usual Hecke algebra, S2, uh, gamma 1, uh, N, uh, no, no N, P to the R uh, with ZP coefficients. So it's the Hecke algebra for cuspidal Hecke algebra. So this is a HEDA's, HEDA's ordinary Hecke algebra. So, so these things have nice properties. Um, so, 
So I want to describe a bit about this Hecke algebra. So for n one, it contains diamond operators. So each of these Hecke operators at finite level, uh, right? This contains, um, if you like, L no J star, where J is in Z mod P Z P to the R Z cross. Maybe I'll put a sub R there. Uh, mod um, plus or minus one, if you like. Uh, so, so those diamond operators uh, are compatible under the inverse limit of these, you know, for the actions. Uh, so these are these inverse limits, right? So, um, so they give you an operator in H. So we get a a J here star in H. But now this J can be anywhere in the inverse limit of this. So if you like, it's in ZP cross mod plus or minus one. Okay, so you have a, so you have a whole, uh, so if I take the, the, the completed group ring of this group of Hecke operators, right, so I get essentially, I get an Iwasawa algebra, right? So, so this, this maps, if you like, uh, into uh, H, and let me call this thing um, lambda sub H. Okay, so this is the Iwasawa algebra of diamond operators. Okay. So, um, right, oh, sorry, that's not the notation I wanted to use. Okay, so this will not be lambda h. Uh, this thing does inject in there, but let lambda h be the, um, be the sort of more usual Iwasawa algebra, 1 plus p z p. So I take diamond operators for 1 plus p z p. So it's a subalgebra of of this thing. I take the things that are in 1 plus p z p. Okay, so um, so now if I take, um, so this has very nice regularity properties because I've, I've taken ordinary parts. So if I take um, H for instance mod the ideal generated by 1 plus zeta p star to the um, p to the r minus 1, I recover this uh, Hecke algebra at the finite level. So just the ordinary part of the usual Hecke algebra for weight two cusp forms of level p to the r, for gamma one p to the r. Hmm? Yeah, level p to the r. So if I mod out by this, I get level p to the r. So it's much like in Iwasawa theory. Um, when you mod out uh, lambda by um, the group element, 1 plus p to the p to the r minus 1, then you recover the uh, group ring for the, uh, the quotient of the zp Gawa group of order p to the r. Okay, so um, also uh, this regularity passes to h. So if I take h mod 1 plus p star p to the r minus 1, H, then I get um, back the ordinary part, I called it ord, the ordinary part of the cohomology of x1 p to the r zp. Um, so ordinary. Okay. So actually let me, uh, if I need it later, I'll just make a definition here that H tilde will be uh, the inverse limit of the H1 et al Y1 P to the R ZP ord. And, and this has similar regularity properties if instead of uh, this Hecke algebra I take one for the, uh, the full Hecke algebra for modular forms and not just cuspidal. Okay, so um, and, and this Hecke algebra is a quotient of that one. Okay, so inside this, this Hecke algebra H, I have um, an Eisenstein ideal, like I spoke about last time. So Eisenstein ideal, 
So it's generated by TL minus 1 minus uh, L, uh, so this is TL star, I guess, um, minus 1 minus L, L star, and for L not equal to P, and uh, UP star minus 1. And that's contained in a, in a larger ideal, which is not quite maximal, but I'll still write it with an M. Uh, so, so that's where I take um, M is, is I plus uh, P, uh, 1 plus P star minus 1. So why isn't this maximal? Because uh, this is taking all the eigenspaces for um, even characters here of Z mod PZ cross uh, at the same time. So, so I can talk about the completion, and uh, the localization, which is the same as the completion, uh, of this H, which is a direct sum and, but, um, but this localization is a semi-local ring, if you like. Okay, so, okay, so now let me um, go back just to the structure of H a bit more. Um, there are two decompositions of H as into HECA modules. Direct sum of two HECA modules that I want to compare. So the first is I have a complex conjugation, right? So, so uh, decompositions of H as direct sum of H submodules. Two, I guess. Okay, so the first is um, H is uh, H plus plus H minus. So these are plus or minus parts under uh, some choice of complex conjugation. But I'm going to fix this choice. So throughout this talk, I mean, I'm thinking of Q bar as inside C. So then I don't really need to choose. Okay. Um, okay. So, so I have, uh, as before, I can divide this into plus and minus parts. We saw that in the last talk. Uh, another decomposition is that um, you, can, you can decompose, so if I have um, DP, it's a decomposition group, at P in um, GQ, and uh, that'll contain some IP inertia. Then there's actually a DP fixed submodule, which is exactly the the um, the fixed part under uh, inertia because of the model I chose, um, and and it's a direct sum of that and um, something I'll call H prime, where um, H prime is, if you like, uh, the so I need some complements. So it's the direct sum over. Uh, so, so what I do is um, I have. Let me. Exp yeah. So I have Q, and then I have Q mu P, and then there'll be some. So delta here is Galois group will be generated by delta, and then I I lift, I lift delta. Uh, in a good way. I don't really want to say. Well, maybe that's not so important. So, delta, so this Galois group, if you like, uh, well, I have to lift it to say how it acts, right? So I have to lift delta um, to an element of GQ. So I have a, I have a delta tilde in here. Um, and uh, yeah, I need to do it in a good way. But let's just say I lift it, and then I look at... Um, the non-trivial uh, delta eigenspaces, uh, so direct sum of. The point is that somehow, uh, so so, yeah, I should. So it acts trivially on here, and this is the part I'm, and 
and, and the part in which it acts non-trivially is a direct sum n. So I mean, basically, I think I can lift it so the order's prime to p is the point. Or it may be infinite, but... Okay, so... Um, but still prime to p. Okay, so now the point is that... Uh, right, so what can I say about this decomposition? So under this decomposition, HIP is actually isomorphic to H as an H module. And, and, and using a pairing of OTAs, twisted Poincaré duality pairing, um, we can find a canonical generator. I won't name it, but we'll use that later. So we can make this isomorphism canonical. Um, okay, and uh, on the other hand, this H prime turns out to be isomorphic to the lambda H dual of um, of uh, H. So. If H is a Gorenstein ring, or, sorry, um, well H won't be Gorenstein in general. I'm going to take Eisenstein components in a bit and then I'll say something more about that. Okay, so, uh, so this is some sort of p-adic Eichler-Shimura uh, which is due to Ota. So I should say Ota here. And maybe I should exclude like one eigenspace um, to be correct, but it won't be important in what we're going to do. Okay, so, so in particular, if I take H prime and I, I tensor it with, let's say, the quotient field of lambda H, so this is the quotient field, <coughs> then I get uh, H, so this is over lambda H, then I get H tensored over lambda H with the quotient field. So once I, once I tensor with the quotient field of lambda H, it becomes free of rank 2. Okay, now what's the difference between um, these two decompositions? Uh, it turns out not much. Uh, so, so, although it's not necessary to do this for what I'm going to describe, it is true in this particular case, uh, where I'm not adding anything prime to the level, that, that, um, that we can choose this decomposition group such that um, this fixed part is the plus part under our fixed complex conjugation and this prime part is the minus part. So can choose, so I, so this is, uh, I guess, um, I proved that in my paper. So we can choose uh, DP such that um, H plus is um, H IQP and H minus is H prime. So from now on I'll just call them H plus and H minus. So, so you may, this is not going to make anything non-canonical in what I'm saying. Um, right, as we'll see. So, so the nice thing about this is to our plus and minus decomposition, which is the sort of decomposition we were looking at last time with modular symbols, um, we, we actually have these nice properties, right? Of the, about, the, about the structure. And we, 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 can, we can describe the local action because we have this uh, decomposition. Okay, so, um, okay, so let's make, we make such a choice. So, um, so locally, we have an exact sequence Um, zero goes to H, uh, oh, so now I'm gonna, sorry, this is wrong. So, so for this I need to take Eisenstein part. So what is HM, right? HM is just uh, H tensored over H with HM. Okay. So from now on I'm gonna look at Eisenstein parts. Okay, so locally um, there's an exact sequence uh, um, like this. Uh, 
Um, right, so this is the fixed part under inertia. It's a DP fixed submodule, so by definition, locally, I have an exact sequence like that. And um, on the other hand, uh, so modulo the Eisenstein ideal, it turns out that there's an exact sequence, and this is not immediately clear. I should say that this is really, um, although, it, as they pointed out, it wasn't far from what I had done. Um, this is that, that there's, a, there's an exact sequence um, like this. So maybe I should be writing the eyes with more of a script, but anyway. So there's an exact sequence with the, in the other way. Okay. So okay. So this is um, as H G Q modules. Right, this is as, as um, if you like, H D P modules. And actually, um, the the if S is the right, if S is the set of primes above P in whatever field, and in, in infinity in whatever field I'm working with, um, in this case Q, this is the action on on H as a whole, so on H mod I H is uh, unramified outside S. So it's a decomposition of, uh, unramified outside P. So it's a decomposition of H, G, Q, S modules. Okay, so um, what else can I say? Uh, I want to say something about H mod the Eisenstein ideal. So this uh, H is the Hecke algebra. Okay, so what is H mod the Eisenstein ideal? Because now, of course, these are H mod I modules here. Uh, H mod I is actually isomorphic to um, Right, so uh, now I'm, okay, so lambda h, uh, maybe I should just do it this way. So I need the full, the full algebra, zp double bracket, zp cross, uh, I'll put it, mod, mod plus or minus one. So with the, this is for the HECA action, right? Uh, modulo, it doesn't really matter, it's abstract. So, modulo um, the p-adic uh, L function, so let me just call, so this will be the, this will be some, it's not quite, there's some twist and some, some shift of variable, but this will be the, if you like, equivariant p-adic L function, um, or as kind of p-adic zeta function. So it's just a sum of the, the p-adic L functions of the powers of the Teichmuller character that you've been seeing in all the talks with some Galois elements, right? It's in the, it's in the group ring. Um, so if you like, um, if, you, if you think about the, um, the, uh, the k minus second, I hope I have this right. This is always get tricky to get, but it's something like this. So if I, if I look at the, the k minus second, eigenspace of this for, for diamond operators, um, and I take 1 plus p to the s minus 1, so I'm thinking of this as a power series, okay? Uh, so now this is, this is an element of lambda h, so, I, so it's, I make an identification of 1 plus p, uh, right, um, minus 1 with a variable t, and then I plug in this, uh, then, then I get um, LP omega to the K uh, 1 minus S, I, I believe. It might be minus 1 minus S. Okay, so, um, okay, so it's, it's giving you all these p-adic L functions for all the, the K even at once. Okay, so now, uh, so, oh, who is this due to? This is due to Mazur and Wiles. In this case. Okay, in the proof of the main conjecture. Well, not in that paper, actually. It's in a different paper, but... 
So, um, okay. So now Galois acts on, on this. So, so I have a map rho from GQ, and as I said, it's unramified outside S. So I have a map rho from GQS to H linear automorphisms, because the Galois action commutes with the Hecke action of H in the Eisenstein part. Okay, now I'm not going to use this at all, uh, but let me just say, um, well, before I don't use it at all, let me say something about it. So, because I'm going to reduce it mod i. So, if I, if I think of this decomposition into a plus and minus part, then I can think of rho of some sigma, sigma is in this, uh, in this Galois group, as a matrix. Okay, so what a two by two matrix. A of sigma, B of sigma, C of sigma, D of sigma. And, um, right. So, so I need to say I should have taken minus before plus in the way I'm going to write this. So this is, this is mapping, if you like, H minus plus H plus to itself. H minus plus H plus. Okay. So, in particular, a, a sigma is a map from, is an endomorphism, an h-linear endomorphism of h minus. And b sigma is a h-linear homomorphism from h plus to h minus. And so forth. Now the endomorphisms actually um, of, of uh, so I'm taking, or everything's Eisenstein parts. The endomorphisms of um, H of H uh, minus are, and the endomorphisms of H plus are actually canonically isomorphic to uh, the localization of the Eisenstein part of H, uh, the Heck algebra. So, um, so A sigma is an end H, H minus M, which is actually isomorphic to HM, and B sigma is in HOM, uh, H, H, M plus, uh, H, M minus. So I'm a little worried about something I said on this board because I said that H, uh, plus has a canonical generator, but I should have said that after localizing at the Eisenstein ideal. Okay, so, so, um, so this again has a canonical generator. This is, this is after uh, localizing at M. Okay, so since it has a canonical HM generator, if I evaluate at that generator, then I, I have a map, evaluation at the generator, that goes to HM minus. Is the generator something like infinity minus zero? Yeah, it comes, from, it comes from that. Right, it comes exactly from that, from pairing with that, basically. Yeah. Um, right, that's actually in the minus part, but then, yeah, then you uh, pair with that, so using the twisted pairing. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it comes from zero, the path from zero to infinity. So, um, okay. So now, uh, so, so we have a map. We can think of B of sigma as lying in here, which we will shortly. Um, and also let me just point out that rho restricted to a decomposition group at P is, um, so then equal to, well, some, some character, maybe chi, cyclotomic, this, something like that, a one uh, star zero. Okay, so if I look at B, it's unramified. Okay, so, so B, so B, maybe it's not one um, star. Let me just put star everywhere here. If I take IP, IP, then I had the right. Okay, so, um, so, so B uh, restricted now, but the, now you can see that B, um, well, you can't see that. So if I look at uh, rho, right, so now let's look at it mod I. So rho bar maps um, 
GQS to aught H H uh, mod I H. So it's just the reduction of rho mod I. I don't need to localize anymore because I'm reducing mod I. Okay, and so it's already localized. Okay, so now this row bar will look like um, A bar, B bar, C bar, D bar. And now um, what this is saying is that um, C bar is zero. And, uh, and so, but also we don't really need that. To get the B bar um, gives you a homomorphism. Um, so, right. This is zero. Okay, but again, these characters will be non-trivial, but, but um, so mod i, again, it looks like, um, so this looks like something like the same character, and this, this looks like one. So, so um, once I go to the level of Q mu P infinity, B bar becomes a homomorphism. So B bar restricted to Q mu P infinity, it's a co-cycle, but once I restrict it to Q mu P infinity, S, if you like, it's a homomorphism. So it's a homomorphism uh, from, of course, that group to, um, to H. Now I can think of it, it's hom H, H plus mod I H plus H minus mod I H minus, but now I evaluate at my canonical, oh, Yeah, I think I said something. I don't. I said something even more false. <laughs> so so it's it's um, H mod I H plus has a canonical generator. So so if I follow by that canonical generator, then I get a map to here. Okay, so evaluate canonical generator. That's all we need. Okay, so now, as I was saying, uh, this is unramified, so this actually factors through x infinity. So that is the Gawa, it's the, uh, if you like, unramified Iwasawa module. Um, and so that means um, maxim Galois group with the maximal abelian pro P on ramified outside nothing, I mean everything. <laughs> maximal abelian pro P on ramified extension of Q mu P infinity. And it actually factors through the minus part um, if you look at how that action works. So, because uh, this will be some, well if I have an <coughs> even character and that'll be odd. So it factors through the minus part. So then um, I get a map like that. Uh, yeah, that's because um, D bar is sort of like um, D bar. Uh, well, Corey Hara could tell you. <laughs> D, 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 VP. Yeah, it's on ramified characters, so you look at what it does on VP, right? Uh, that's not locally. Oh, not locally, globally. You said globally. Yeah, but that's true too. Um, so. Oh, it's because it's Eisenstein. Right. right. It's because it's, it's because up minus one is in the Eisenstein ideal. I think. It's not just up minus one. Like locally, I mean, yeah, the reduction of representation is like the sum of two characters, right? Um. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I that, that, that's called the, uh, that's the technique of uh, um, super representation. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you may not have to, but yeah, anyway, is because it's UP minus one is in the Eisenstein. It's not, really it's, not just it's not just that, I guess. Right. Right, that's why on VP it's, yeah, that's why locally it's one. Um, yeah, okay. Right. Right. So, um, okay, so now we get a map like this from x infinity minus to h minus mod i h minus. And I will call this map epsilon. Okay, so, um, so, the, 
So now, if you'll notice, in the last talk, um, right, we had um, a map called var pi. So what was var pi? So var pi, as I define it, was just, maybe I'll call it var pi 1, was a map from um, H1, X1, P, right, to uh, ZP uh, on the plus part to, um, well, there was a sub-zero, but then I showed it factored modulo Eisenstein ideal. This is Eisenstein ideal in the Hecke algebra acting on this, the usual Hecke algebra. Um, to uh, H2, G, Q, uh, mu, P, S, Z, P, 2. Okay, and of course I can do this with any R, so if you like, um, I could put here, um, I could put omega R, and I could put an R here, and I could put an R there, and I have a perfectly good map, and they're all compatible, is the point. So I need like an R Eisenstein ideal here. And um, so, so I get an inverse limit. Well, I don't want to call that var pi. So I have some inverse limit um, of these var pi r's, which now maps the inverse limit of the h1 x1 p to the r z p plus mod i r to the inverse limit of the h2 g q mu p to the r s uh, ZP2. Now, uh, in my first talk, I gave this inverse limit under co restriction a name, right? And that was the Iwasawa cohomology. I gave it a symbol. So uh, H2S um, Q mu P infinity uh, ZP2. So this is the Iwasawa cohomology. But also in this particular case, um, you see, now this, the point is, if you like, when you take this limit, you might as well have taken the limit mod p to the r coefficients, right? You might as well have taken z mod p to the r z twisted by 2. As long as you can do that perfectly fine and you'll get the same inverse limit. You just have to take, with respect to the appropriate reduction mod p to the r maps. So, but once you have, but if I had done that, I'd taken this coefficients mod p to the r, then I have enough roots of unity in here that this Galois group acts trivially on this. So this, so in the inverse limit, although it's not true at the finite level, this Iwasawa cohomology group is the same thing as um, with one coefficient and then twisted by one on the outside. I can pull out a twist like that. And so now, um, of course, this was all to the plus part, I should say. Plus part, plus part, and then this becomes minus part because I pulled out the one. Okay, but this inverse limit Remember actually that um, at the finite level, if I take q mu p to the r here, right, g q mu p to the r with a zp1, this thing is canonically isomorphic to the um, p part of the class group of q mu p to the r. And now I've taken an inverse limit. So what this thing is, is it's x infinity minus twisted by 1. So on the other hand, as I was saying um, earlier in the talk, this thing is, if you like, h mod i h, but now, um, right, there was a minus 1, right, uh, on this to make them isomorphic. So here I need a 1. Of course, if I'm just taking plus part, then I need plus part of this whole thing, which is the same as minus part on the inside. So I have a map like this. And so now if I untwist this by 1, I can define a map var pi, I twist by zp minus 1, to like that. Okay, so now you see I have a map upsilon going in this direction and a map var pi going in the opposite direction. And this map, remember that this map took uh, monin symbols uv, I'll put with a sub r and some plus part, to uh, cup products. 1 minus theta PR to the U, 1 minus theta PR to the V, I'll put an R and a plus here. That's, it's, so it's a very explicit map. Now these things, again, they 
yeah, mod i at least, they live in this group. Okay, so, so u and v are not, u and v are two numbers, I should say, which are just in z mod p to the r z minus zero. So I have an explicit map, if you like, um, which Fukai and Kato proved is Eisenstein, this var pi. And um, I have a less explicit map uh, in this direction. Okay, so, so let me point out um, something about this map. So in the proof of the main conjecture of Iwasawa theory, in the spirit of, say, how Wiles did it for totally real fields, or um, more exactly how um, Ota did it later for Q mu P infinity. Um, you, the proof is very much, well the proof looks at Galois actions on the cohomology of modular curves. Uh, in particular, if you look at all these groups I was looking at, these cohomology groups before I took inverse limits with QP coefficients and I somehow in the inverse limit of those you have some lattice um, and one of the lattices that you have is this H. Another one of the lattices you had is the H tilde I defined before. Um, and, and uh, or not, not really the H tilde, but the Mann and Drinfeld splitting applied to H tilde. Um, so, so there are various lattices, um, and, and this H is one particular lattice. And um, if you choose the right lattice, then you can consider this exact story we have here. You can do, um, so it needs to be a Galois, Galois needs to act on this lattice, it's a, so it needs to be an H, G, Q, um, S module. And um, so if you choose the right lattice, then uh, you can do this whole thing and you can look at this map B. So now I've replaced H with some lattice mod Eisenstein ideal. And again, you can get a map like this. Now to the lattice mod I the lattice. And now the point is, if you choose the right lattice, then you can make this map surjective. Okay? And then once you know that this map is surjective, you know that this is an H mod I module, right? And H mod I is like lambda mod, it's something like lambda, right? Mod C, right? So, so in any eigenspace, what it is, is it's lambda mod the, mod the Kubota-Leopold p-adic L function, right? So, so in other words, you know as a HECA module, uh, so you do a computation of the fitting ideal, and as a HECA module, you see that the characteristic ideal of, of, of this thing is divisible by the p-adic L function as a HECA module. But the, but the HECA action and the Galois action differ only by a twist, or, or maybe an inversion, you know, uh, involution. So, so you actually know the, that the characteristic ideal of this thing, maybe you compute it exactly, but anyway, is essentially, uh, well, the characteristic ideal of this thing is, in particular, divisible by the p-adic L function, as a, now a Galois module. So now, if you know this map is surjective, then you know that the characteristic ideal of this thing has to be divisible by the p-adic L function. Okay, and then, well, then, um, you, you look at, so, so this is in each eigenspace, and you look at it in all eigenspaces, you know if that happens in all eigenspaces, then then actually the characteristic ideal has to equal the p-adic L function because you have the analytic class number formula. So, so this is how you prove the main conjecture of Iwasawa theory. And um, so, so, but the problem here is in, in this particular case you don't know that this map is surjective so you don't, you don't know that you can prove the main conjecture of Iwasawa theory using this, which is this, this lattice which is rather canonical, I mean as compared to some random choice of, of lattice. Okay, so, so, however, I made the following conjecture. So how well defined is this B, the B bar? It's completely well defined. Can't you change your... Well, you could change your complex conjugation, but like I said... No, 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 I mean like your basis of... There's no basis. I'm not, I'm not choosing any bases. Oh, I mean, oh, I, I defined this, the only thing I chose was this, but that also only depend upon the complex conjugation choice. So the canonical generator here is canonical, um, so there's no choices involved. I mean, except of, of a complex conjugation. 
Yeah, I'm not taking a basis, right? So it's not a real matrix, right? right, it's an right? right. Yeah, it's a, it's sort of like a pseudo representation, right? So you have this because you have this canonical generator. Right, right. So yeah, so everything's canonical, um, right? I mean, it's a nice thing. Once you have the Q bar as in C, you have canonical roots of unity, and you have everything is yeah. So everything, but anyway, um, okay. So my, here's the conjecture. And I'm going to write this in a little stronger form than you find in my paper. Um, but uh, you will find this form in the first version on archive uh, in a remark that I hoped it was true uh, before I removed it. Okay. So, um, and the reason I removed it was only because I was unsure. Okay. So, um, okay. So this is the conjecture that these two maps are inverse to each other. Okay, so um, so in the in the form uh, so it was originally stated that um, that the composition essentially the composition uh, was a canonical unit in um, was multiplication by a canonical unit if you like in lambda cross um, maybe lambda h cross. Or yeah, maybe maybe it was in lambda h cross, and then you need the maybe I should say zp zp mod right cross mod plus or minus one cross. But but I did hope that this was true, and there were various reasons I suspected it might be. I was that the sign could have been anything. So I think though I got the sign right. So. Um, Okay, um, so here is what's been proven, and not uh, by Fukai and Kato. <coughs> I don't think I'm going to fit it here. How much time do I have? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, okay. So suppose that either. Uh, one, LP omega chi s has no multiple zeros for any k. Uh, I guess not zero mod p minus one, but it's not really okay. Um, or that, um, or that up minus one generates. Uh, the Eisenstein ideal tensored over ZP with QP. Okay, then what's true? So I, I guess maybe I should make the point here that so so once you know this conjecture, you know that um, epsilon is surjective. So then you know that you can use this map to prove the main conjecture. Okay, and then you have a description which is sort of nice. Uh, of of the this unramified Iwasawa module, which is the uh, subject of the main conjecture, in terms of um, in terms of uh, Monin symbols, mod Eisenstein ideal. Okay, so th so the so the theorem says suppose one of these two things, then. Um, Then this composition is one, um, and um, the other composition is one mod uh, any p torsion in h minus mod i h minus, and and so we know that there's no p torsion in this, the classical theorem in Iwasawa theory. But um, we don't know that there's no p torsion in that, so that's and the only torsion we have to worry about is actually for the derivative of the um, uh, the p adic zeta function. Okay, so um, in particular, as a consequence, since this is one, in particular, uh, the conjecture of uh, McCallum and myself on the surjectivity of pi, if you like, or the the surjectivity of the pairing. 
or the, that it spans the image, the image spans, uh, holds for P. Okay, so, um, so some remarks. Um, one is that um, I had showed that um, that uh, I had showed that so that um, the pairing of p and eta k minus one equals um, the two minus kth eigenspace of q mu p uh, s uh, z p two. Um, 2 minus k, um, if and only if uh, up minus 1 generates um, i hm. Um, and this is under um, generates i hm. Uh, so I should have said hm in the maybe h. Well, maybe it's already in hm because generates i. Um, and uh, Right, so, so um, a supposing some condition on Bernoulli numbers, but it's a weak condition. Well, for instance, it should divide the, maybe I could write it, P divides BK, P does not divide B, P plus one, one minus K. So this makes it non-trivial and the other one you need. But you see, so that was related to the, to the second condition here. They've weakened it, um, at least for the proof of, for proof of this. Okay, um, and, and two is, so for the second condition, the first condition, um, they proved, so they proved actually that the following theorem, that the derivative of the p addicts zeta function, so this is with respect to the s variable, um, times, um, so this is in the USL algebra, times uh, this composition, is the derivative of the p-adic zeta function. So that's where the derivative condition comes in. They're saying that the derivative is not a zero divisor in, um, in uh, h mod i. Okay, so um, I had hoped to give some of the proof, but that's probably not going to happen. Um, there is an alternate maybe form um, that I... Uh, conjectured, which is kind of nice. So, so using these S reciprocity maps, um, so maybe I should just say that there's an S reciprocity map which I constructed in the first talk. So it, it takes, um, so let me call it psi k um, S and um, it takes uh, mu infinity plus to x infinity minus tensor x infinity minus. I'm just taking plus and minus parts. Maybe I'll put a minus or plus here. Um, so, so I constructed this in the first talk without any pluses and minuses, and then I'm just taking a projection. So this is some, I don't really need this because I'm, so, so I constructed such a map in the first talk, and this interpolates cup products. And so what is this thing? This is uh, norm-compatible sequences of P units. This we've defined, and this is the P ramified, or the S ramified Iwasawa module. So, so this thing contains, if you like, one minus zeta, so some norm-compatible sequence of p to the rth roots of unity. Okay, so this is a generator of the, the zeta, p to the r give you a generator of the tape module, the norm compatible. So this lies in UK, UK, maybe I should just take UK, U, sorry, U infinity. Okay, and then, um, right. And so then um, you can actually derive a comparison using this map upsilon between this reciprocity map applied to 1 minus zeta. So if you can imagine, I apply, so what do I do? In the first coordinate, I apply, no, the first coordinate, I apply upsilon. 
and that gets me to h minus mod i h minus. In the second coordinate, I apply some map, which you saw something like in, in Tong's talk, uh, so, which is a map to, if you like, zp, zp cross minus. And um, so I can compose with these two maps, the, the direct, the tensor product of these two maps, let's call this, um, so call this phi. So if I take upsilon tensor phi of this thing, then what do I get? I get what I'll call L. L is the Maser Kitagawa two variable piadic L function in some or some object that interpolates its values. Well, I mean, you can think, like you think of a piadic L function as a power series in essence. So, and so this is, um, this is some minus part and reduced, this is reduced mod Eisenstein ideal. It's not really minus part, it's minus part in the first and the second coordinates. So, um, okay, so that's equivalent. Uh, so I just wanted to bring those S reciprocity maps from the first talk back into it. So um, the proof, um, what it does is, so the proof of this theorem is what I would have given. And the proof um, basically calculates uh, the left-hand side and the right-hand side together in a big commutative diagram. Okay? And, and what you'll see is that somehow this thing comes out of some, um, some composition of a, um, some sort of cycle class map, if you like, um, which, which to a monon symbol will give you some, um, what Kato calls a zeta element, which is similar to some element of his Euler system. So, so there's some, he calls that Z infinity sharp. And, um, and then you compose that with some variant let's say level P version, so it's a simpler thing, of a Coleman map, which he calls Cole, or sorry, which Fukaya and Kato call Cole flat. So you have Z infinity sharp and Cole flat. It turns out that this is equal to some usual Coleman map and some usual, with a, and some usual. Okay, so, so, uh, okay. And then it turns out that this thing is, multi turns out to be multiplication by, by that. And then on the other side, this is somehow um, given by, uh, well, you use the fact that you use to prove that var pi is Eisenstein. Um, again, it's given by some cycle class map related to this thing. Uh, var pi is some cycle class map related to that thing, uh, followed by composition, uh, composed with um, specialization at infinity. And then um, you have this intermediate map to make the diagram commute, which is cup product with a log, if you like, something related to the log of the cyclotomic character. And that's where the multiplication by the derivative comes in. It's a computation in Galois cohomology. And then you follow that by this upsilon map. And it turns out that that gives you the same thing as this composition here. And so they show this diagram commutes and then they get the equality. So um, that's what I want to say. Thanks.